finish the four that I started working on last week. Um, so if you aren't familiar, sorry, it's these blocks here. They're all different reds and medium fabrics and the creams and everything. Um, well, I, technically they're not all different. There's four that are the exact same of each one. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be working on more of those. I think I only need two more to finish the quilt top the way I planned it out. I have eight more blocks of fabric cut though, so I need to decide if I want to do something else with those six or, um, cause I can make the quilt a little bit longer, uh, or if I just want to make something else with them, you were saying maybe like pot holders or something. No, not pot holders, like, uh, placemats, like little oh, placemats, placemats for plates. So uh, it's like a bowl cozy, but for yeah. a plate, um, I guess. So I just need to decide to do what I want to do with those extra blocks. I already have the fabric cut for them, so they're going to get sewn together just I want to kind of have a plan for what to do with them uh hi Ian uh hi everyone in chat uh Candace and Irene um I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna be able to get, catch all of them but I appreciate you all being here and yeah so uh I it's kind of awkward how I'm sitting because I kind of did something to my foot <laughs> My wife is the master of hurting herself while out jogging and or walking. Like, since we've been married, just the stories that she comes home with, like, oh, I was out jogging and I tripped on a squirrel and I broke everything. Um, I did not trip on not, that. No, did what did happen. you do this time? I forgot what you tripped on. So, so I used to, I used to run six miles a day, Monday through Friday, when I was younger. And I love to run. That's like one of the things that keeps me from having anxiety, much like sewing is. So I always go out for a walk and I decided I was going to start jogging more again. And I've been doing really good with that. Um, and I was cruising along on Monday <laughs> doing really well. And I... Because I started jogging again, I prefer listening to music, but when I've been walking, I just listen to podcasts, but music kind of keeps, like, this is way too long of a story for what I did. I apologize. But, um, so I don't have music on my phone, so I put Spotify on my phone, but I haven't really put playlists together. So I had a random one going, and I didn't like the song. I took out my phone to skip it, and I didn't see this big bulb that was in the road because it marks the curve of one of the roads there and my foot slipped across the top of it and I swear my ankle hit the ground <laughs> it was bad so this is how stubborn I am though yes I instead of just walking home I finished my walk which was like another mile and a half which probably wasn't the smartest thing to do at all. No. Well, and here's the thing, folks. I am <laughs> a doctor. I have a doctorate. Um, and I continually give my wife medical advice, and she never listens to it. And it really... as a result, things get worse. <laughs> I had told her to ice her ankle today, and I forced her to do it, and I had to sit there and wrap it up, which is horrible for me because I hate feet. And just a few minutes ago, she's like, oh, yeah, I should be icing my foot. I'm like, yeah, I literally tell you that eight times a day. And it never never sinks in. Well, so here, I don't really think it's as bad as the last time I injured myself it was. So Yeah, but your, your, your inability to listen to my medical <laughs> advice is just as bad. That It'll be things. fine. It'll heal up. It's just a little swollen. Yeah. <laughs> Kill it. <laughs> So, um, I do have it elevated under the desk, though. No, you don't. So elevation only well, works when it's above your heart because you're trying to. Get it's the, the best I can do right you know. now. <laughs> Killing me, lady. Killing me. Um, I I apologize, people. I'm sure I've missed half of you in the chat. That's my fault. I'm not good at the chat stuff. Mm -hmm. I try. It's my one job, and I can't even do that right. So. Um. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to catch it. 
We are a married couple, Ian. That is that is accurate. Um, for quite a while now. What did he say? He said we. I, I'm guessing because of our our bickering or our <laughs> banter. He is. Uh, he's realizing that we're married. I, I thought you would have known that by now, Ian. <laughs> But in case anyone didn't know, yes, we've been married for, I don't know, 17 years, something like that. Just in case anyone is curious, though, I'm not going to go to the doctor about this situation. I, the only time I have ever gone to the doctor, pretty much, is to have my kids. I'm not, like, And that's a whole other story. <laughs> at least, at least our first, our daughter in California, well, just don't even get us started there, but the, the medical care we got in Florida was fine. Uh, California was a little bit off. Oh, Kathy says she feels your pain because she tripped over a bright yellow speed bump. See? No point. So, Kathy, I, I assume you have not sued anyone for that. And for that, I thank you because, oh, 2016, 2017, um, I, so I hate personal injury law. Like, that's not what I do. I'm an attorney, but I do not do personal injury. I don't do car accidents. I don't do slip and falls. Um... Most of the stuff I do is on the defense side, so it's representing the companies that get sued for stuff like that. But the, the most bullshit, excuse my language, but bullshit cases that exist. And um, one of my clients is a it's, a, it's an international company. They're based in France, and they had a sales rep at one of their facilities here in Texas. And she, she, she so first of all, she had called to see if she could make a sales call. The company said, no, like, we're too busy today. You can't come. She shows up anyway, tailgates, because it, it's a locked facility, tailgates into the facility behind someone who had a pass to get in. Her car almost gets caught by the gate, but she makes it. So she, she's trespassing already. <laughs> she is completely unhealthy. She is 60-some-odd years old. She is... Um, she she already has a gait problem because she's overweight and she can't walk properly and she's trying to lug a 50 pound bag and anyway so she trips over a bright yellow curb that is marked and everything breaks her kneecap because she falls on her knee and sued for three million dollars because she said it was an unsafe working condition mind you she's trespassing and she's not allowed to be there and it was very bad Hey, sorry. Give me one second. My daughter has a friend over, and I've never met. Hi. No, that's not. What's your name? Yeah. All right. Did she drive safely? She was very scared. No, okay. Not. You're in trouble. Now. She was like speeding and everything. No, I was not. Oh, no. Shadow. Shadow, you go. No, 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 you go. Sit. Shadow, come on. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> go. Thank yep, you. likewise. Go, go Shadow. Go. <laughs> Sorry, uh, our daughter has a friend over that we've never met, and so we wanted to meet him. Um, and it was her 16th birthday yesterday, so she's she's she got her license, so she she passed her license in the morning, um, and then she came home to find a car in the driveway which she was not expecting. And so, anytime she goes out now, we want to see her when she gets back to make sure that she's still alive, because we're still getting used to the idea that she can drive on her own without us. Now. Um, but, but she was supposed to be back a little bit before because she knew we were getting on, but... Yeah, but the... So we live in an area where you you have to go through a guard if um, you don't have a pass for your car. And because it's a brand new car, we don't have a pass for it yet. So it took her a little bit longer to get through the guard. Because uh, they force you to prove that you live here. And sometimes if you show them your license, that's not sufficient because you could move and still not leave. So they got to look you up on the computer and it's a whole big deal, but... Um, they want to know if the lady won. No, no, no. She lost. Um, well, so I don't want to say she lost. So she got some of the money, didn't she? Well, like, so we she settled. She got medical, like some of the medical. Well, we stuff. settled. Like her, so what ended up happening is, so she sued. Our client's like, no, we're not going to we're not gonna pay her because she, because we had the whole thing on video, which was even better. <laughs> you could <laughs> watch her on trip you. on the curb. So like there was no defense. <laughs> So we, she still sued, and uh, we we had some depositions, um, but what ultimately won the case, and and I don't typically toot my horn, but this is literally my specialty. My specialty is financial stuff. Like that's the only Y'all, reason I was. Y'all, we got in, started now. <laughs> yeah, the, the only reason I was involved in this case was because there was a large economic and financial component to it. Because anytime someone claim, she was claiming that she'd never be able to work again, and so uh, there's a bunch of experts that get into like what her earning capacity should have been and how much money she's lost as a result of this injury. 
And so that's when I get called in because I get to go talk to the PhDs in economists and in econ and tell them why they're wrong. So we had a deposition with her, um, her financial expert, who is a PhD in econ at Texas A&M University. Um, and I completely destroyed him. And I went through his report with him during the deposition, which is videotaped so the judge can see it, and essentially got him to admit that he his work was shoddy and that it was using made up numbers and that he didn't base his projections in reality because that's what a lot of these people do. They don't expect to run into an attorney that can speak their language. And so um, after that deposition, literally the next day we filed a motion to exclude him as an expert witness and the judge granted it, which is very hard to do in federal court because it's called the Daw Bear motion. They never get granted, but ours did. Um, and once he got disqualified, they had no way to prove their damages because it's, it's a case where you need an expert. So we ultimately settled for some minuscule amount, which was good for us. I mean, the client was happy because what we ended up paying was essentially what our legal fees would have been to take the case to trial, which would have been stupid because, you know, so she got some money, but it was essentially at the end of the day, I think she ended up getting like $5,000 because the vast majority of what we paid to her went to her attorney because she her, her attorney was working on a contingency and so he had to recoup all of his expert fees like what he paid the phd to write the report and do all that stuff and so 90 some odd percent of what we paid went to the attorney and so she got like five grand it was great so but yeah i could i could talk all day about that case and why i hate personal injury so Hopefully, Kathy, you didn't sue. Um, <laughs> yeah, after you went on that long rant. Yeah, I hope you didn't. <laughs> I think she said in there that she just looked around to make sure no one was... No one watched? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm, now I'm catching up. So. That, um, that was kind of like what, what I did, too. But there was there's no one around here. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, well, welcome, Christine, from Australia. Yeah, I love her quilting. I, be, I One of my biggest things one of the things i like to do most in life is create stuff and or appreciate what others create because there's a lot of stuff i can't do i can't paint i can't color i can't do most artistic things like i'm very good at making things engineering wise but i am not artistic like if you saw a painting that i did it like we tried to do a bob ross painting that was um so, it was, I... I, so let's just say that hers turned out excellent mine turned out like a bird wrapped on the paper <laughs> or the canvas it was difficult though because i i never worked with oil paints before when i was in college and took painting classes it was all like acrylic or watercolor which i'm pretty decent at both probably not right now anymore because i haven't done that in a while but oil was a whole different that was that was different for me so um so I love watching her create stuff because I'm amazed at how well she can paint and quilt because it's not, I mean, quilting I'm learning, so, but but I'll never be as good as her for sure. Um, I don't know. You're much more meticulous than I am. That is absolutely true. So I, while I finish, like I'd get 10 finish and you'd still be working on every detail of the one. Yeah, that, that's doing. the other part is like, I'm still working on a quilt from like November because I wanted everything to line up perfectly. So it's, uh, it, it's a, it's a long thing. Um, Etta K, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly, we are, um, we're near the Austin County line, uh, the Austin County and Fort Bend County line. So we're outside of Houston quite a bit, but we're in the general Houston area. Um, what was I going to say? So I, I need to move this because it's bugging me. I have the wrap-up video for January filmed of everything that I got finished from my unfinished quilt stash. So that should go up uh, at the, well, it's basically the end of this week. So tomorrow, I think I'm going to schedule it for tomorrow. So you'll be able to see how many quilts I got finished in January. Um, um, so Ian, I, I, I try not to sound like a pretentious douchebag. So <laughs> I didn't say we live, I, I didn't say that we live in a gated community because that's not technically correct. We live in a gated town. Like our entire town. That sounds worse. I think oh, well, you just need I'm to just, stop. I'm clarifying. <laughs> our entire town, like the city is gated and you can't get in unless you live here. That, um, that sounds so much worse. <laughs> yeah, but it's not technically a gated community. It's a gated town. So, um, yeah, it is. Uh, Don Jaspering, welcome. And Terry 
Chichester. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, mm-hmm. It's Dawn's first live. So um, we apologize. <laughs> yeah, we apologize. It's 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 an it's an event. Let's just say that this one. I did you I, mess it up? Well, no. I'm I'm trying to say I because I've worked on this project so many times on here. I wanted to plan out something else to work on. And that just didn't happen because this was a crazy... It's only Wednesday, but it's been a crazy week. Is, um, you Like you mentioned, yesterday was our daughter's birthday. So yes. I didn't work on anything yesterday. Took her to the... the is it called a DMV here? I have no idea. I think it's the Department of Transportation, but I have no idea. I don't... I took her to wherever you go to get your license. And I anything I could do to mess that up, I messed up. So it was an event. Um, yeah, we you like, and Kelly are spirit animals because she said she can trip on spit. <laughs> I, uh, we didn't bring one of the forms we needed, so I had to search for that. And then we apparently scheduled the whole thing wrong. I don't know how we did that, but she said we, we picked the lot wrong because she needed to do a driving test and we picked... To get a license, and I'm like, well, isn't I mean, the I don't problem <laughs> is Texas because when we logged in, because I was with my daughter when she was doing it, the only option it gave us was to do the the to get a driver's license. There was no option for a driving test, and it's it, the whole system was just ridiculous. So she was a little disappointed because she didn't think she'd be able to get it, and the lady said was super. She was really really nice, and she said that she would try to see if they could squeeze us in for the driving test, and. They did, so that was good. But it was we were there longer because that was just a whole situation. Um, yeah. Oh well, welcome, Jan. Jan's in Victoria, so I've been to Victoria a handful of times because um, I I handle fraud cases that arise in bankruptcy court, and um, one of the judges that has a lot of the cases that I was handling had is based in Victoria, the federal court there. So been there quite a few times. Um, yeah, well, and because they were taking, so, like, it was, yeah, it was just a whole, yesterday was a lot more difficult than it needed to be for a bunch of reasons, because we wanted to surprise her with her car, and so (laughs) I had it delivered the day before, and it got delivered at a point where she was supposed to be at soccer, um, but she, she has a private coach that she sees, and apparently... Her So she normally leaves at 6 p.m., but her private coach had to push back the lesson an hour, so she wasn't going to leave until 7, and I had the car delivered at 6.30 thinking she'd be gone. So it was sort of right at the time where I'm like, oh, crap, she can come out and see it. So I had to talk to the guy down the street and say, hey, can I park this in your in your driveway so that she, because our daughter would be oblivious. She would never notice that it was there. <laughs> so I did that, and then in the morning I went to go pick it up, and... Um, then I had to hide it again because they were going to leave and it was just a whole thing. But it finally worked out, so it was fine. And I wish we'd gotten it on video. Yeah, it was um, a good reaction. It was a great reaction. But she, so I, where I took my test in Florida, you do not need to parallel park. And here you need to parallel park. I've never parallel parked in my entire life. So there was no way I could teach her. And I don't think we really knew that she needed to parallel park on it on the test until a little bit before and then um so the weekend before he was teaching her how to do that and (laughs) that was the only thing she was nervous about on the test but she she passed that part with flying colors yeah she said she nailed it and she was like i was really disappointed that no one cheered for me and i thought that was hilarious (laughs) i just put the thread out oh no um, yeah, so I, Ian, we've, we've lived in numerous states together and I've lived in more than that. And Texas is by far the hardest to get a anything driver's license. Well, anything from a governmental perspective. California's really bad. So I, I don't want to say Texas is the worst. California's pretty bad. But Florida was nice because they print your driver's license right there. Yeah. Like- so we moved to Florida. We literally just walked into the DMV. And we didn't have an appointment. We're like, hey, can we get a driver's license? They're like, sure. We filled out like a single page form, signed it there. And then they take your picture and print out your actual hard driver's <laughs> license and give it to you. It, the, the whole thing really to us took like 20 minutes. Uh, with no appointment. It was amazing. It was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Here, everything. I mean, 
I don't. I think it's just because there's so many people. I don't know, but yeah, when we went in, there was a lady there trying to get something done, and the lady's like, "Do you have an appointment?" And she's like, "No," and she's like, "Well, then we can't see you today." Yeah. <laughs> <She's>... <laughs> um, uh, I didn't know that. So, Lenny, I'm a disabled veteran too. I did not know I got my driver's license for free. I need to. I not. I mean, I think I just renewed mine last year. I should have looked into that. I don't know why, because my license says that. On it. <laughs> they're not gonna tell you if you're Bastards. gonna if you're willing to pay. They're yeah. gonna take your money. They know I'm a disabled vet. Damn says on the license. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, yeah. So me too, Ian. When I took my driver's test, I took it in a car that only had a driver's side, um, a driver's side side view mirror. It was an older car that didn't that wasn't legally required to have both. And in California, which is where I got my driver's license, you had to be able to back up a hundred feet on a curb and when you're in a car that doesn't have a passenger side view mirror there's like no legitimate way to make sure you're staying on the curb and not mirroring up now i passed but it was it was not fun um so yeah it, i assumed par I, I just assumed parallel parking would be on there but we told our daughter it's like look you want to get a license that's fine but you need to do all the legwork like i'm not doing a damn thing for you. <laughs> so she had to look up the requirements and she just didn't tell us about parallel parking until you know three days before she had to go uh what is going on? Uh, so Sean, she I think she paid $11. Yeah. And I don't know how long, like mine is good for five years as an adult. I don't know what hers is good for since she's a minor. So I don't know if the 11 was for the actual Bless license you. or for the test. Bless you. Excuse me. Because I thought the lady said it was 11 for the test, but maybe it was just all inclusive. I don't know. Well, that was the only thing they charged us. So. Yeah. Um, well, I know because I was confused because she just, the way, their whole setup was weird. Like, they told us to just drive around to the back and that's where she would take the test. Somebody would come to the car and get in and drive with her. And so I'm like, well, I didn't really want her to drive around back there by herself because um, she doesn't have a license yet. So I was like, am I allowed to go with her? And she was like, yeah, you can go back and then you'll just get out and go inside. And I was like, okay. So we drove around there and we're just sitting there forever waiting. And she calls me after a few minutes and is like, where are you? And I was like, waiting in the waiting room. And she's like, well, I'm done. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> where, do, where am I supposed to go? She's like, right back where I was. And I, so I'm just like, I don't know. The whole thing was, I just... When I did mine, you go out to the parking lot, show them where your car is. They look at and make sure the blinkers and all the stuff works, and then you go. But they have, like, a whole setup there just to streamline it. There's just cars lo loading in there to do the test and then get in a different lane to leave. It was bizarre. So I'm, I'm going to go on a soapbox real quick. And, and, Lord Lenny, I'm not saying this is your fault, and I'm definitely not saying that you're one of these people, but... I get really pissed off when states or other agencies give certain disabled veterans discounts and not others. So, like, here in Texas, we get, like, $500 off. I don't know what it is. It's probably more than that. But, like, we get um, we get some money off of our property taxes as a result of me being a disabled veteran. But yeah. the amount of money you get off is directly correlated to the percentage you are disabled. The the Veterans Affairs rates, uh, and so does the military, but it's mostly the VA, um, gives you a rating percentage from zero to 100% based on whatever your ailment is. Now, um, what pisses me off about that is there are some people, and I'm not saying you, Lenny, by any means, but there are some people that game the system and they're that to get to 100% because that gives you certain things that other people don't have. So, for example, when we first moved to Texas... We, one of our moving guys was 100% disabled veteran. Now, let that soak in. He was, his full-time job was, and he was like 28 years old. His full-time job was moving people in and out of houses, carrying couches upstairs. But he was 100% disabled because the, the way the rating works is if you've ever had knee pain and it's in your medical record, that's 10%. If you've ever had back pain, that can be 10%. And they, they just add everything up until you get to 100 
I'm like, this guy's younger than I am. He's moving, like, couches up the stairs. Like, he's clearly not 100% disabled, but he was able to game the system. Now, I have not gamed the system. Now, I could be 100% if I wanted to be, but I, I don't want to rip the government off by getting, you know, more money than I'm entitled to. Um, but it also pisses me off because at the end of the day, it's like, and, and, and I'm using this moving guy as an example. He never went to combat. He never got injured. He doesn't have a purple heart. He, his was just all wear and tear on the body, which I get because I was in the military. Because like, I've actually had shrapnel in my body and I've had to undergo multiple surgeries and somehow that guy gets more benefits than I do. And it's like, that's such a disconnect. Like we shouldn't be judging disabled veterans against each other to find out who's more entitled to some. It just pisses me off. Um, I'll get done because it's going to make me mad, but it just frustrates me when I see, I, oh, the worst one. So when I, I was honorably discharged as a result of, uh, if you're in the Marines and you get injured and it's bad enough, they put you before a medical review board. And if the Marines decide that you can no longer do your specific job, and for me, we won't get into that, but my job required me to, to run three miles in less than 18 minutes and to do, uh, I don't know, 30 pull-ups and all this other stuff. And when you can't use your hand, you can't do any of that stuff. So long story short, they determined that I was not capable of doing my job. Now, the Marines have no funding, or we have minimal funding, so they don't retrain you to do a job. They discharge you. They give you a bunch of money and say, thanks for serving. Um, if you're in the Army, Air Force, or Navy, you just get retrained on a new job, or they make accommodations for you. That's why you see people in the Army, the Army, Air Force, and Navy that don't have a leg or don't have an arm, and they're still in the military because they have the funding to retrain you to do a different job. The Marines don't have that. Um, so, but but when I had to go through um, uh, my counseling to get out of the military, because anytime you're injured and you're getting a, dis a discharge for that reason, they make you go through a counseling. At least in the Marines, they do. Um, and my discharge counselor was a retired Navy personnel and she was hundred percent disabled, but she was hundred percent disabled because she had emphysema because she had smoked since she was 16 years old. And I'm like, how is that person hundred percent disabled? Like she chose to make a life choice that caused her to have, it had nothing to do with the military. The military didn't force her to do anything. Um, but she was hundred percent disabled. I'm like, get out of here with this garbage. But that's just me and the government don't get along well. So, um, I think my, I'll stop now because I, I feel like I'm just going down a road that I don't need to be going down. I think my stepdad gets full. No, he's he was in Vietnam and he saw some shit. I, so did I. But like I wasn't in Vietnam and I assume that's much worse than anything I did. But he's mentally crazy um, and he deserves to be 100% because that dude has like the worst PTSD I've seen. He's just. Yeah, oh. his is really bad. And he has like a lot of um, <clears throat> conditions from like all the stuff they sprayed over there and did like medical conditions yeah so i'll get off of that because i could just sit here and and be on that soapbox forever um so um yeah so that's that was fun <laughs> um i'm just trying to catch up on the chat now they're all wondering if you're okay. What? I'm just joking. <laughs> I was like, I'm that's probably. <laughs> um, yes, Kelly, that is correct. So just remember on, I know it's Wednesday, but uh, Saturday morning is 7 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Eastern. Sean has his brekkie with Sean. Um, I don't know who his guest is this week, but it's I a saw, but I don't remember who. I know it's another. I'm pretty sure when I saw the photo that it's another um like male quilter on youtube oh cool that's awesome yeah i can't remember who it was i can see the image but um uh, let's see. what's going on outside i'm guessing he's getting picked up oh yeah do you want to go say well no there's no one there he's just waiting for his mom oh. they're probably trying to find our house because <laughs> it's not easy I need to trim those. They're coming back inside. There you go. I thought it was, but... Um... Yeah, I need to turn my... Well, I can't turn my sounds off because if they need anything, I need to... Um... So, oh, someone's in Mexico. I've never been to Carataro, I'm guessing. Um... So... Oh, but I've seen... You've been around a lot, Sylvia, so... 
you're not new. I just didn't know you were in Mexico. Um, so, all right. Well, that was fun. Um, one of our topics, I'm going to see which one. Oh, this will be a fun one. This will be a little bit more fun. Um, so as, as anyone who's new, we always have three questions that we like to, it's like, you know, pull the audience sort of old school uh, millionaire. Um, what word is a lot of fun to say? And we didn't ask, but why? What is the... Um, um, so... Sorry, my wife wanted to go see if we were going to meet oh. the parents, but they can't find our house, which makes oh. sense because where we live, there's no lights, street lights or anything like that, so it can be difficult to find where we are. Um, yeah, that's fine. I haberdashery, that's a good one, Ian. Um, I've been to a couple haberdashers, and I love saying that word um, in England because that's, I don't, I don't, I don't know there's a lot of haberdashers in America, um, but haberdashery is a good one. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and say that life so crazy because I don't know how to properly say it. I think it's Worcestershire, but that's oh. that's not a fun one. What kind of sadist are you? That's not Probably a fun Probably because word. she can say it and no one else can. <laughs> um, Mine's flabbergasted. I like saying that. So. Which um, one did you like? Oh, it's verisimilitude, I think, oh, is probably it was that one, one of that, my favorite. Probably that one that means, um, I can't think of what it is now. I don't know. <sighs> um, I've got a way, maybe the word that I'm going to use for the trivia question. Um, but, onomatopoeia. So, Bob Blah Blah. I, why do I know that? He's like an attorney, isn't he? I think I've seen ads for Bob Blah Blah. Huh? Someone said Bob Blah Blah. It's a oh, name. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I had to see it to understand. Conundrum is a good one. Onomatopoeia. Uh, um, <laughs> life was so crazy. Life so crazy says she says, <laughs> "Wash your sister sauce." <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, worst sister in the Shire sauce. These are fun. Uh, bamboozled, flabbergasted. Our daughter was on a kick where, like, she would say flabbergasted. I think every, that's why I like it, because it's every funny. Every other word, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, they wouldn't let you in. <laughs> You'd try to come, and they'd be like, sir, you're not allowed here. You and your LeSabre need to leave. Uh, Honestly, they would probably let him in. It seems like half the time they just let whoever in. I think they, yeah, but you'd have to, like, have an address in order they to... They let Lorelai in because we forgot about it. Well, I mean, yeah, but she had her brand new license that said, yes, I live here. Like, this was printed today. Yeah, I guess, but still. Discombobulated. That's a good one. It's great, though, because because of the way in which our town's set up, like, we don't get unwanted visitors. Like, no one can visit us unless we know they're coming, which is great. Um, and it really cuts down on, like, the door-to-door -door salespeople because they don't come. Because they're not allowed to. Um, discombobulated, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I love that movie. Um, what is that, uh, Sean? Is that some sort of Australian food or an animal? What is that? Um, Gunny Ganu. Oh. Whatever it is, it tastes better than Vegemite. How come it... Both words are the same, but it's spelled like it's pronounced different. It's Australian. <laughs> they they're they're down under. It's all backwards. Um, ostensibly, oh, I like that one. Nomies. I don't know what nomies are. It's really bugging me that I can't think of the word that you. Well, I think it's going to go to number two. So, all right, the second question. Hey, Constance, how are you? Um. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dreich. Okay. Why are...
quarter square triangles. So fussy. Um, I don't know. I think it's, I forgot to use my starch on the seams. They're not wanting to lay oh. very flat. Well, that's not good. Yeah. Um, scunnards, that's a good one. But it also makes me think of scuttlebutt, which I think is a, a word that is used in the civilian world. Um, but it just means gossip. It's like we use it in the military all the time to refer to gossip. Is that what it means? Scuttlebutt? Yeah. Yeah. I never really knew what it meant. I don't know what most words mean, though. And I can't pronounce those words. Schadenfreude. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> flummox. Oh, that's a good one. Flummoxed, I like. Bodacious. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I describe my wife to people. Thank you. <laughs> Which is a good thing. What are you talking about? Um, let's see what else we have. Um, shite. That's 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 a good way of, or a nice way of saying a word that you're not otherwise supposed to say. Um, <laughs> so that's that's funny, Sean. Um, so in Michigan, one of the easiest way you can tell someone is not a Michigander is there are a bunch of towns in roads in Michigan that are spelled one way but pronounced a totally different way. So. I think a there's, lot of areas are like that. Yeah, I felt it was like so much more in Michigan, though. So there's a town in Michigan spelled M-I-L-A-N, just as this town, the, the town in Italy. But if you went around calling it Milan, people would laugh at you because in Michigan it's pronounced Milan. Um, and there's a, there's a bunch of places like that. And it, so it was always... Uh, oh, and there's a lot of streets in Detroit proper that have names that are pronounced very differently than the way they're spelled so you could always tell if someone was not local. one of the towns around here is like that isn't it um because we were just talking about it with lorelei i feel like because we were driving by oh the well there's humble right? yeah that's, a lot of people pronounce the h and it's not supposed to be it is supposed to be <laughs> well um so just like Milan is milan sensuous um are those five inch squares? No, right? Those no, are... they're three and a half. Well, but what are, what are they before you? So I them? started with them as, oh, I'll have to get that form. I think they were four and a half. Yeah, they so were... Donnell's coming through, Mackinac instead of Mackinac, and then Ypsilanti. No so, one knows how to pronounce that one. I think when I started with them, they're four and a half, and then they get trimmed down to three and a half. Okay. Yeah, Scotland's got a lot of words where you look at them and you're like, yeah, I don't know what this is. Um, also in Wales. Like, Wales is just a whole other world of trying to figure stuff out. I don't even try anymore. Um, ipsy. <laughs> yeah, Ipsy. Uh... There's a really good, and I don't remember what it's called, but there's a really good barbecue place in Ipsy, just across from EMU. Everything good That's there. true. <laughs> Nincompoop. Oh, I like that one. Um, Losser from Sobeka. No one said What tosser. is the word? Losser, L A H L A H S E R. I don't even know what that is. I feel dumb sometimes. Uh, I don't know. That's why. Okay, I, well, that's, it's it's a. I think it's a high school in uh, Bloomfield. I may not even be saying it correctly, but that's why I like that. I'm gonna say it again till everyone watches it and likes the show. That's why I like the floor because I feel smart watching that because it's just <laughs> photos of stuff that you have to name. I felt so smart in that tools one because that one lady didn't even know what nails were. Yeah, that was, yeah. <laughs> so, Kelly, I, I'm not from Canada, um, but do you just say O'Connigan? Is that how you pronounce that? Um, hopefully. Um, I'm oh, I, I like that game. Which game? Boulder Dash. <laughs> oh, I do like Boulder Dash. It's a great word. I don't remember what it means. I think it literally says on the game, but... 
I yeah. love that game. Well, well, we just love board games. In yeah, general. we do. Welcome, Cindy, and and welcome to the. We try to be fun. Um, you got here just in time. I was just on a soapbox <laughs> that probably offended many people. So you uh, you showed up right and right right on the right uh, time. Uh, I think everyone has something that they're passionate about, though. That like. Maybe other people don't understand so much. So Tracy H, one of um, every every one of these um, lives, we have three questions, and one of the questions for the day is, "What's a word that is fun to say?" Uh, so that's that's what people are naming off, <laughs> just words that are fun to that say. That would be weird if you just yeah, you just come in and, and just see all these random words. Um, so, Laura, your husband is a good man. So thank him for us. Laura, I have to see what happened. Uh, she she was saying she's late and lost track of time because her husband gave her gave her a set of trim locks and slide locks for Christmas. Oh, nice. Okay, thank you, Kelly. I will remember that for the future. Not that I'm I don't have any plans to go to BC anytime soon, but um, if I do, I will know how to say it. Uh, Becky says we need to try Poetry by Neanderthals as a board game. I've never heard of it, so we'll have to take a look at it. What was, what's that Louisville, one that we have Sam. really liked lately? Nancy, I say Louisville. I think a lot of people say it wrong, and I probably yeah, but I say Louisville. Um, what's a game that we like that we've been playing? Yeah, that one. Well, there's one. that Tilty one, but yeah, I don't remember what it's called. I think it's called Tetra. That one's fun. The other one is one too. Yeah, I can't think of that one, but that was the one that I was trying to think of. Um, it's similar to Eye to Eye. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Angels wants to know what you are using right now, that pen. So it's a... Oh, what's the name of this pen? I can't think of what it's called, but it's just like a pen that you can fill with a uh, liquid. And I have just have some starch in it to starch the seams because they're not laying flat on here. So I'm going to let them dry. Uh, it's similar to the Easy Press pen. I just, uh, I started, instead of getting the refill for that, I just got a, a like kind of more generic pen. And I'm just filling it with like liquid starch from Walmart. That's super cheap. Um, Danelle is asking, I don't, I don't think you have a response, but I'll just put it out there. Uh, Danelle is looking for a new serger. Does anyone have any brands which they recommend or any brands they would stay away from? I think we're probably going to get the same answer on both sides, depending on what people like best. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't have one. I would like to get one at some point, but I don't have one and never have had one. So I can't really answer, but I'm sure there are a lot of people in the chat that probably have some suggestions. What I can say is, um, and, and this is sort of going to my point and is going to be opposite what Ian just said. Um, we have a Bernina and I, I, if I had to choose a brand, I would, I don't really like the Bernina products. I think there's a lot of weird engineering things that go on with them. Um, but Juki, I is, I love our Juki machines. I think they're excellent. We've never had any issues. I think they're built, uh, at least from an engineering standpoint, better. So uh, I assume Juki has a server. So that would be, if I've never used one, so I'll preface that. But I like Juki as a brand much better than any of the others that we have tried. So I will say that the Bernina that we have seems to be one of their machines that a lot of people have had trouble with and have had the same problems I have had, but it doesn't seem to be like overflow into some of their other ones for some reason. So I think it was just like an, an unlucky when I went to go in and that was the one that was, was being pushed at that time since it was new or something. I don't know, but, um, it's, it seems like it's just like mine <laughs> that that well, particular that, that one number, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like if that happens to you i feel like it just kind of puts like a like a bad taste in your mouth about them in general but it's just so interesting that all the other models that i see that people are reviewing and talk about don't seem to have the same issues as mine but a lot of people that have the same machine that i had all seem to have the same problems i had yeah it's it is what it is 
Um, well, I see, there you go. Sheila Fruge says she has two Jukies and two Berninas, and she would take the Berninas all day, every day. So, there you go. Yeah. I think it's just going to be the, mach the machine you have and how it works for you, because... Just one of those things. Yeah. So, um, so if you came late to the party, I'm going to ask another question. So if you see a bunch of weird things in the chat, it's as a result <laughs> of one of these questions. Um, and this one I like because I, I love random trivia, but what is a bit of trivia that you know that is very interesting but useless? And I will go first, and maybe this is what you were thinking of. Um, I love word trivia, um, and in another life, I probably would have majored in linguistics uh, because it's really cool. But my bit of trivia that is useless, uh, other than for situations where someone asks me for useless trivia, is that the word facetious... That's the word that I love. I figured it was. Uh, the word facetious in the English dictionary is the shortest word in which all vowels appear only once and appear in order. So facetious is F-A... C E T I O U. So A E I O U appear only once and they appear appear in order. And facetious is the shortest word in the English dictionary in which that occurs. That just made my head hurt. Yeah, I figured it would. <laughs> but um that's I, my no, you think I knew piece that's why you like the word. I knew you'd like to say it all the time. And when you say it for the longest time, I would just listen to you say it and just be like, whatever. And then I think I eventually asked you after you said it like 8 million times what it actually meant because I didn't know. Um, so, Auntie Hem Handmade, I learned that I the the 40 degrees Celsius and 40 degree, negative 40 Celsius and negative 40 Fahrenheit are the same. I think I learned that in like high school chemistry. But that actually, I think, is a very useful thing to know. Although, I guess, how often are you in minus 40 temperatures? <laughs> um, but from a scientific perspective, it's very useful. And it's the only um, temperature at which that is true, which is weird. Uh, Sheila is down for word trivia. Tell us what you got, Sheila. What, 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 what do we have? Um, yeah, and don't play Scrabble with him because he knows all the words. Yeah, I have Scrabble and I have a bone to pick. Like the, the, the official Scrabble dictionary is the most ridiculous thing ever because... There are some words in it that are French. There are some Chinese words. There are some Latin words, but only some. It's like, if you're going to allow one Chinese word, you probably just need to allow them all. Same thing with Latin or French. So I don't like how the Scrabble dic Dictionary picks and chooses words from other languages that are allowed. It's like, it should only be English words or American words. Because um, it's just not, it's just stupid. I don't like it. Um... Can you hand me my little thing behind you the blue I, thing that's very helpful the blue thing <laughs> the thing that looks like a cutty blade okay that's that not... that this yeah ladies and gentlemen <laughs> they know what it is so <laughs> my wife just told me this looks like a cutty blade <laughs> see that's why i don't do well in scrabble <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> thank you that doesn't even look like a ninja star <laughs> cutty blade um <sighs> This is why we get along so well, because I allow your intelligence to shine. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia says the third definition of dragon in the dictionary is an angry woman. I wonder, is that is that in a Mexican dictionary? Is it in the... I've got to look it up now. Um, uh, let me go to Is Mary. it really? I'm going to check Merriam-Webster. See what they say about this. And then I'll check Oxford. Dragon. Thank you for my cutty blade. Uh, well, so the Merriam-Webster's third definition of dragon is a violent, combative, or very strict person. So not. They not probably had to change it from woman. It may have said woman before, before, yeah. <laughs> uh, Let's see what. Let's see what Oxford says. I so my my isn't as fancy as you, but. I think it's hilarious that um, you can't tickle yourself. Huh. I didn't know that, actually. That's my little bit of useless trivia. You can't lick your own elbow, but I think everyone knows that.
The OED. Yeah, OED is Oxford English. Yeah, it's uh, dragon. The definition of dragon in OED um, has nothing to do with angry people. There's only four definitions, and none of them have anything to do with angry people. So, Joy T, uh, I drive him nuts with stuff like that, where I'm like, "Can you get me the thingamajig?" <laughs> yeah. I do that with movies too because I'm horrible with remembering the names of movies I like, of songs I like, and I'll tell him, like, he'll ask what movie I want to watch tonight, and I'll be like, you know that one with the actress I like, and he's like, that's not helpful. It's not. <laughs> it really isn't. Because she likes a lot of actresses. It's like, I don't know which one. You know, the one, the one, one the where they went to the beach. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um... Redundancy is redundant. That is absolutely true. Um, Jeff the Quilting Chaplain. So, Jeff, are you a, a chaplain in the military or just using chaplain as, as a, another word for a religious leader in a sense? Um, yeah, that's your pet peeve, too, is people who misuse words. I do. Uh, mis most misuse the word peruse. How are people using peruse... How do you use peruse? Like, use I only, I know the definition and I've, I don't even know how you misuse it. Like, are they saying pursue instead of peruse or are they saying it's a country? Um, I'm actually really curious to know how people use the word peruse. I'm waiting. Uh, oh, prison chaplain. Okay. Well, good for you. Um, Sylvia, I bet that they did because I bet that someone found it offensive, so it got removed. Oh yeah, there's lots of. Uh, I don't don't even get me started. Some I know it was in the news, re maybe not even recently, mm. maybe, but there was one that got changed. There was a lot that got changed. Yeah, because apparently we're in 1984, uh, and the Ministry of. And you're talking about the book. Yeah, I should just shut okay. up. Okay. <laughs> I should just shut my mouth. Um. It's one of those days. It's been a long week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Benadryl Cabbage Patch. Nice, Ian. Um, That's literally how I am, though, Ian. Like, it drives him insane. Because I can't remember the name of anyone or anything or any movie. And he'll just have to start scrolling through movies that we have, that we like, that we save. Until... We come across a picture I recognize. <laughs> yeah. Although that's, I mean. That's hard too because they keep changing. Yeah. Them. Netflix and Amazon Prime. Like you, you, I'm scrolling to find a movie that we, that we like. And I'm like, hey, I'm looking for the one that has a blue background and three people in it. And the next thing I know, I can't find it. And then I start searching my name and like, oh, now it's a purple background with one person. It's like, what the heck happened here? <laughs> um. And some of the the images they choose for the movies have nothing to do with the movie, it seems. It's so weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's like, what are we doing here? It's like, you've had this picture for three years and now you change it? It's like, why are you trying to confuse me? I don't, I don't <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, not, not a fan. Wimbledon tennis match? Who is that? Wimbledon tennis match. That's that movie you love. No, well, I love the movie Wimbledon, but I'm, I'm assuming... So, since Ian said um, Benadryl Cumberpatch, then... Oh, who is Benedict Cumberbatch? I'm wondering if Wimbledon tennis match... Oh, he's just using different, different names for Benedict um, Cumberbatch. Enjoy. So with Debbie, have an enjoyable dinner. <laughs> That'd be, you'd like that. What's that? A video with different... Oh, ways. variations of yeah. his name. Oh, so, um, funny story, and I... What's his name? Lubalin, I think. L-U-B-A-L-I-N. But one of my students in um so this week um in one of the classes i teach we are going over um well it was last week actually it was fake news um and we were talking about the legal implications of fake news and one of my students um i i try to be a cool hip professor it probably does not come <laughs> off well 
But I like to use memes because I find memes to be hilarious. And one of my students sent me a, um, a YouTube video, which was of a guy. I don't even know how this had to do with fake news. I think she just wanted me to see it. But um, there's a guy, and I think he's on YouTube, and I think his name is Lubalin, L-U-B-A-L-I-N. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. And he does, he's a musician, and he, he finds, like, ridiculous texts that people put online and he makes, like, music videos out of them. And I, I spent, like, a good hour going down the rabbit hole of his videos. And they are hilarious. Did you see the one I sent you? No, because you sent it to me when I was out with Lorelai. Oh. And we don't get service. So it was, <laughs> the one I sent her was hilarious. It's it's a bunch of, it was, a, it was like, a, a lady on Facebook who had made a post about... Um, I knew it. I saw it came up like something about stealing her recipe. Yeah. So basically this, this lady was saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, but she made a post on Facebook saying, you know, Carol is the, is the worst. She stole my recipe for eight. She stole my recipe eight years ago and told people it was hers. And then the comments just were hilarious. Like one lady's like, keep my friend's name out of your mouth. She's a Christian lady. And it was hilarious, but he makes these music videos and they're glorious. So if you ever get, um, ever get bored then check him out because they were hilarious let's see uh joy t i'm not doing the puzzle mystery quilt um i discovered that i really struggle with like block of the months and stuff like that because i i had so many of those that i didn't finish all the way because if i missed a month whenever they came in and put it off that I struggled to get back into it and keep up like hence why I have a million unfinished projects <laughs> <laughs> well you're working them down though you started yeah. with 74 you cannot 70, say I'm not going many. to but I'm saying you started with what 73 or 74 I don't remember 74 that. 74 and then I added one more to it because I'm struggling to finish that legit kit rose that's just the way it happens, Amy. I don't know what was going on the other day. Um, but it happens. Like when when you like you you could be the world's foremost expert on different types of cheeses and someone will ask you, you know, "Hey, what's a cheese? What, what's a yellow cheese?" and you're like, "I I don't know. Can't think of it." It's just Yeah, all always you can think of is all the white times. ones. <laughs> Uh, that's why I so a lot of teachers when I was in school because I did really well in school I you know got straight A's and all that and they always wanted me to do trivia stuff because they had all these different trivia clubs and I was oh, he said no I cannot do that because I am horrible at that kind of stuff where you have to think of something really fast like I like to I have to be able to sit there and think about it and I don't know why, but our son is the exact opposite. Like He gets I, that from me. I can, you know, I'll be helping him with math or something, and I'm writing it out, and he's like, why are you writing it out? And I, like, I have to see it. I have to write it all out. And he's doing the math in his head, and I'm like, I don't know how you do that. Lorelai's like me though where she has to write it out like mm -hmm. I, neither of us can spell name names and words out like I have to write it. Um, Sandy wants to know how long you're able to keep your iron off and it still stay hot. Uh, I don't know. So usually with stuff like this, because the mat helps keep it warm from underneath, it does pretty well. Uh, I don't have too much of an issue there. If I'm doing a lot of yardage, I usually will use my other iron that plugs in because it stays hot really long and I don't have to, to recharge it. But I feel like it does pretty well. Um, I did all the I think almost all these without putting it back on and they're all they're all good. Um Joy T, I think you'll if this is your first one, I think you will be fine because the first one I did the whole thing didn't have a problem because it was exciting, it was new. Um and then I got other ones and then that's where I was kind of like, well that was fun the first time around, so and I need something else to interest me. It's all these Cord, sorry. Yeah, how I've been able to keep you interested for 17 years is beyond me. Because you go from having a long beard to a short beard. To... I, I got to change it up. It's true. 
Um, okay, uh, Susan is asking for the last question, and yes, we do, Susan. Um, hey, Barb, we love Michigan. Don't know where you are. Feel free to stay in the chat if you're comfortable with it. Um, what weird food combinations do you really enjoy? I don't know if mine is weird, but I love um, cottage cheese and pineapple. Hmm. But I, I feel like that's, that's right. the kind of thing, because there's all those fruit combinations with cottage cheese, so I don't know if it's really that weird. Yeah. Uh, Cindy, it, every Wednesday starting at 7 p.m. Central is when we meet. Um... Ooh, Sheila, I like that. The Dutch consume more licorice than any other country. Okay, bonus question, Sheila, if you know the answer. Is it mostly red or black or some other flavor? Because if it's black, that's disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, but that may also be so why they're so dominant in certain sports. black licorice and I cannot. Uh, no, I'm not a big fan. Um, so I've, I want to try it. I've never have. I have been told that peanut butter on a burger is like the greatest thing ever i've never tried it uh, I, I really like want butter. to um just because it sounds wrong but it could be delicious i don't like the idea of that uh potato chips and cottage cheese peanut butter honey and banana that actually sounds really good um ice cream with potato chips so angels i've done that and that is delicious the salt and sweet it's good stuff uh, okay, Jonna, I I like you, Jonna, but I don't. <laughs> there's something wrong there. PB sandwich with mac and cheese. What are we doing here? Um, I like both of those things, but I I don't think I could eat them together. You probably would love it. Oh, she was says black for the licorice. I don't. There's something wrong in in um, the uh, cheese and jam. Like black so licorice bad. wasn't that like the first type? I don't know. I'm sure it was. Because, because red licorice is really just, like, gum paste with sugar <laughs> and red color. Um, peanut butter and glazed donut. That actually sounds really good. Cottage cheese and tomatoes. Grilled hot dog with peanut butter wrapped in bacon. See, I could, I could go for that. That <laughs> sounds delicious. I don't know why, but it's, I'm hungry, too. I forgot to eat dinner, so that sounds really good. Peanut butter and dill pickles. That sounds like... That's like your prototypical I'm pregnant meal, right? Like... Peanut butter and pickles or something like that? Sylvia, um, don't say that. <laughs> Sylvia, oh, I'm getting there. Um, ham, cheese, mayo, and grape jelly. That sort of sounds, Cindy, like a Monte Cristo. Because I think a Monte Cristo is like jelly and ham and it's like deep You fried. would probably like that one, french fries with tartar sauce. Oh, I love tartar sauce. I could totally yeah. do that. Um I can't go full on like mayo like they do in some parts of Europe, but I could do their sauce. Um, dried yogurt and bulgur wheat. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Um, french fries and honey is a little off for me. Although I do like dipping french fries in like the, the high seed It's probably a sweet McDonald's. salty though. That's, that's probably good. Chocolate covered potato chips are delicious. I don't like chocolate. Beer and ice cream. I've never tried that. I'm not a big fan of beer. Um, like, my two favorite beers ever... Well, that's not true. One of my favorite beers is only available in Ireland, so I can't get it in the States. Um, but that one I would drink all day. And then I loved Anchor Steam, but Anchor Steam closed. No longer a brewery. And there was um, there was another uh, San Francisco Hefeweizen that was delicious, but they closed also. So, uh, peanut butter... I See, Laura says peanut butter on a burger is really good, so maybe i got to try it. Um, I wonder if the Red Barn... What is it? The Red Barn? Is that what they're called? Huh? The, the Burger Barn. I wonder uh, if they have a... a they do. Peanut butter. Okay, good. I thought they did. Bacon on a maple icing cake donut. I've had one of those. They're delicious. Grasshoppers and guacamole with chips. Sylvia, there's actually a restaurant in downtown Houston, and I don't remember the name of it now, but they do traditional um, South, Amer no, so yeah, South American food. And you can order grasshoppers there. They put them on the, uh, the guacamole. And they're just, like, crunchy. I mean, I'm not... I don't really think they add anything to the flavor of crunch. Do you remember crunch. that old show, Fear Factor? Yeah, with Joe Rogan? I don't know. Yeah, it's with Joe Rogan. You can't ask me something like that. Like, I'm going to know. But they used to do stuff like that where you ate, ate stuff... Um, like grasshoppers and different things. and But they would do it live, right? Like you're, you're eating a live grasshopper. I don't out. remember the ins and outs of it, but I was always like, I could never go on a show like that because 
My gag reflex is not. It, I, I could not. Um, ketchup on scrambled eggs I can get behind. Mayo with grape jelly in a sandwich. I don't think I could get behind that. Well, what is Velveeta cheese fudge, Tracy? What? Is it just Velveeta cheese mixed with chocolate or is it something else? Um, I'm, I'm interested. Uh, onion rings with mayo and pepper. Okay. Grape jelly on potato pancakes. That's not so bad because a lot of people put um, like applesauce on potato pancakes. Mashed potatoes on a roll. That's like a Thanksgiving tradition. So I'm good with that one. <laughs> I always wondered with like people's traditional foods like in different countries how like on Amazing Race when people go there and they'll have them eat something like there was that one where they did a whole ostrich egg scrambled and they oh, had ostrich to eat eggs all... are delicious. well I'm not saying it's bad but nobody could like it's hard to eat yeah, all of that so all at much. once yeah but um I always wonder if the people that are there watching and people are gagging if they're like upset with them because it's you know it's <laughs> well, like it is it, it's their... offensive in a sense yeah I've always wondered that uh, another Dr. Kathy Smith says peanut butter, peanut butter, bur and she's a doctor, so she knows. Peanut butter burgers are delicious. Potato chips on a hamburger, I like that one. Cottage cheese with ketchup and mustard, that's that's a bit much for me. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a huge fan of cottage cheese either, but uh, bow tie noodles, buckwheat, and fried onions, that's, that's an interesting one. So Ian says you use Velveeta to make chocolate fudge, and apparently when it's done, you don't taste the Velveeta at all. Huh. Yeah, and then Tracy says it's Velveeta, cocoa powder, powdered sugar, butter, and vanilla. Interesting. See, I just don't like chocolate, so for me it's a no, but I could see how it could help get it to that creamy, creamy consistency. Yeah. Um, <coughs> uh, Susan says her grandpa on her mother's side put ketchup on a scrambled eggs, his mashed potatoes, and in his coffee. That's that's a bit much. Uh, boiled root vegetables with salt cod salad and avocado and eggs with olive oil. That sounds like a very healthy. Like, no, I'm thinking yeah. like I don't know Swedish dish maybe or a Finnish dish. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know where you are in Quilt Theft if if that's something you got over in Europe. But that sounds like something you could find in I do either Sweden or Finland. Love avocado and eggs together, but I don't I don't eat fish. I'm so I'm like the pickiest eater, but then I eat really weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, you really are. Yeah, I wouldn't say you're picky so much. There's certain things you just won't eat, like seafood. I don't I, think that's it's picky. Real, it's it's just... really hard for me to try new foods, like stuff that I'm not familiar with. Um, so that's part of it. Like quail is not really an un unusual thing to eat, but I can't like. It's one of his favorite appetizers from one of the rest of the restaurants we go to sometimes, and I just can't do it. Oh, the quail? Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. So good. Um, yeah, I just... But I grew anything up in Florida from where people like alligator, delicious. and I can't do that. Yeah, the first time I tried alligator was actually in, um, you know, Roger's... Uh, it was in, in your kitchen, or not your kitchen, but your mom's and Robert's, uh, Roger's kitchen, where he had uh, like a jar of, um, mm -hmm. fer or it wasn't fermented, it was uh, pickled gator. It was very chewy, but it just tasted <laughs> like, I, I wasn't, I, I wouldn't eat again. Um, yeah, Joy, like everyone thinks I'm crazy because I don't like chocolate and I have never liked it. My mom has pictures of me where she tried to give me chocolate when I was a baby. Like, uh, like it was like frosting on a wooden spoon that she was mixing up. And you like, it's a progress of photos and it's hilarious. If I can get her to send them to me, I will post them in my Facebook group because they are so funny. But it's like her handing me this, the wooden spoon with chocolate icing on it, me taking a taste of it. And then I have like, the most upset looking face handing the spoon back to her. <laughs> um, I have never liked it. So I, I read something the other day that made me laugh because I'm a huge, I love dark chocolate and I, it, it was basically just shitting on people that don't like dark chocolate, but it said, um, if you like milk chocolate more than you like dark, dark chocolate, you don't really like chocolate. You like sugar. 
Which I think is absolutely true. Because all milk chocolate is is just sugary, dark chocolate. So I can't say whether that's true or not because I don't like none of it. <laughs> Any of it. <laughs> Uh, popcorn and pickles. I like, so I like certain types of pickles. Um, and I can't tell you which ones. Like, I just need to taste them. You can but tell. But I can put pickles usually, on anything, really. You can usually tell by looking at them. That's You're true. like, I'm not going to like yeah. that, that one. <laughs> um, I don't doubt it's a Caribbean dish in Qualfect, but, but those ingredients are very, um, used quite often in Scandinavian type cooking. So um, I don't know if there's an influence from Scandinavia or one of those countries that, that went to Puerto Rico, but um, definitely interesting uh, things there. Because I used to, so I lived in El Paso for a short period of time. There's a military base down there. And there was a, an amazing Puerto Rican restaurant there and I I didn't ever see that dish on their dish, but man, their food was so good, so good. Um, I have never heard of Bubby's, Jana. Um, I do like spicy garlic pickles. There's like a spicy garlic pickles that our local Costco sells. And they're delicious. Um, and I don't remember what they're called, like screaming, screaming Ed's pickles. Or I don't remember. I feel like but. you mainly only like ones that are refrigerated. Like the um, the kind that are like that. I don't think you like like the jarred ones where they get no. Too they vinegary. have to be refrigerated. Yeah. I've never seen like a shelf stable pickle that I've enjoyed. You because you just don't like vinegar very much. I don't really. Although I love pickled jalapenos, so you know there's that. So probably because the spice takes over that. Yeah, it could be because um, I love spicy stuff. Um, so I have I've had uh, chocolate covered jalapeno, which was delicious. It was so good. All right, we are gonna have to wrap up because I need to go ice my ankle again yes, before bed. <laughs> um, it's gone. It's gone too long. <laughs> well, everyone, uh, because my wife decided to trip while well, she was trying to change a song or something like that. <laughs> Uh, we're going to have to go so she can ice it again. Did you put the ice pack back in or do we need to get another one? No, it's still sitting okay, in so there. Sitting on the bed. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, pickled okra is delish delicious. Delicious. Okra Sheila. is just delicious. I love okra. So thank you for joining us. Um, we will see you again next Wednesday. We'll come up with some additional questions. Um, I just realized now that asking a bunch of food questions when I had <laughs> you're, you're, Now is, you're even hungrier. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we just let the day get away with us, so we didn't end up... Yeah, it's just, it's been a busy two weeks, three weeks. And then we didn't get much done yesterday because it was our daughter's 16th birthday, and that took up the whole day, which is fine, but it just set you back a day. It is. We should have planned. We knew when her birthday was. I know. We, we literally <laughs> should have. It's not like it changed. Um, yeah, but we will be here next week, and hopefully I am healed up and I'm thinking properly and have a new project planned so you don't have to see me make the same thing for like the eighth week in a row. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you to everyone who is new. Hopefully we didn't scare you off. Uh, we do this every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central, so feel free to come back if you had a good time. Feel free to never come back if you hate us. It's fine, too. Um, or try again because sometimes we're in a different mood. <laughs> I think we were. I think we're in a good mood today. I mean, I don't think we're ever rude, um, unless you disagree with some of our takes, which is totally fine. No one has to like everyone. Um, so, but it was great. Uh, it's always my favorite night of the week. So, yeah. I had a good time. I'm just starving now, so I got to figure out what I'm going to do. But um, thank you all for coming, and I hope you all have a great rest of the week. And don't fall. It's not fun. <laughs> and if you do, listen to your husband. <laughs> Or wife. Or, yeah, whoever it is. Whomever you've got taken care of you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.